Hi everyone, it's Ray back with you once again with another update, another video. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome to On the Road with Yeshua as I share my experiences on the road as a trucker and what the Lord is doing in my life. Right now I'm traveling through Banff National Park, just about uh, almost at Lake Louise. And it's, uh, well, it's not too bad here for weather. It's, it's a little chilly, but not too bad. There was a little bit of tape that you've seen there just before. As you can see, there's still some leaves on the trees. Winter hasn't uh, uh, hit us at full force yet starting to rain here. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if it started to snow, just as I'm saying that. Just wanted to give you an update on how things are going. Um, one one guy asked me a question on one of my YouTube videos and said he wanted to get into trucking and I wanted to uh, answer what he asked. Um, I can't remember the question. I think it just said, I'd like to get into trucking. What, what do you what do you advise? Or what do you recommend? Or something to that effect. Apologize for that. I don't have it in front of me. My experiences, looks like we're going to get hit with some good rain here. My experiences so far have been pretty good. Um had a chance to see a lot of beautiful scenery, a lot of wildlife, and that's one thing that I like. I've always loved traveling. If you like to travel, uh, then it's a perfect job. Another thing I like about it too, you're, you're kind of your own boss. That's the way I look at it. Your driver manager gives you uh, your load assignments and you you, know, you pick up your trailer, you take it to where it's supposed to go, they send you information on where you're going to pick up the next one and you bring it back. I like to leave a couple hours early usually, if I can. Sometimes it's a bit tight, you only have so many hours to rest, you have to take 10 hours off every time you've uh, driven 13 in Canada anyway, or should I say 13 on, on duty hours. Uh, yeah, 13 I believe it is. 14 on duty. So after you've driven 13 hours, you have to take 10 hours off. Or you can take 8 hours off, but you have to take 2 additional hours off during that day and spend it in the sleeper berth or off duty. But nevertheless, if there's an opportunity to leave 2 hours early, I'd like to do it because then I'm not rushing. If I want to stop and get something to eat, I can or, uh, you know, stretch my legs, enjoy the scenery. It gives me that opportunity as well. If you're, uh, if you're a believer, if you believe in God, if you believe in Yeshua, if you're a follower of Yeshua, <coughs> and you notice that your relationship with Him is not quite where you want it to be, this is a great way to, to, uh, to build it up because you spend a lot of time alone. I see a lot of truckers out there that they've got their little headsets on and they're talking to people constantly. And I'm not much of a phone person, I never have been, probably because it's so expensive. But then again, if I'm talking to somebody on the same network as me, it doesn't cost anything. But I'm just, I'm not a phone person, I never have. I use this. Uh, you know, the, the two-way radio here to communicate with the other truckers if there's bad road conditions uh, or, you know, if there's a police road check up ahead or a Department of Transportation doing a check, they, they everyone warns you of these things that are coming. If there's a bear on the road or a deer that's lots of deer on the road or elk or moose, um, that's that's what this thing is great for, especially when the winter time hits really hard. 
this is going to be a real lifesaver, this radio, because you can actually... The nice thing about this radio, I've got an icon here. It gets out, uh, it's, a, it's a VHF. It's got LAD 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, 26 other channels, or 23 other channels, plus a whole ton of logging channels. I never used the logging channels, never had to yet. Uh, nice thing about that radio compared to a CB, CB puts out about 4 watts stock. And on sideband, if you have a sideband unit, it puts out about 12 to 13. But most truckers don't use sideband. In the U.S., I think they do. <coughs> and they throw a little hamburger helper on it, and they can get a little further out. That's a bilinear amplifier. They call it a hamburger helper. But generally... Most of the truckers out here in Canada, they don't use CB. They do in the U.S., though, because you're not allowed to use these in the U.S. Because some of the frequencies on this VHF radio are actually police frequencies in Washington and in other states. So if you drive over the border and you've got your microphone plugged in, yeah, they'll give you a fine or they'll take it away. So uh, if, you, if you're driving in Canada and you get one of these, don't forget to unplug your mic and put it away before you drive over the line because they'll you'll get fined for it. Now these radios do require a license. It's not very much like 50 bucks for the whole year. I know a lot of truckers that don't have licenses, but if Communications Canada happens to be sitting over at a scale somewhere checking people to see if they have <coughs> uh, a license for their radio. These things are worth about $400 or more. It's pretty expensive when they just say, thank you very much, we'll take that, you're not licensed for it. So if you're gonna get a VHF radio, just go online and get the license for it. It's cheap, not very much. And the nice thing about it too is that right now I'm in Lake Louise, well, approaching Lake Louise. I could probably talk all the way to Golden, which is, uh, I don't know. Man, I don't even know how far away that is. 75 kilometers, 60 kilometers away. And this is pretty, uh, a lot of hills and a lot of mountains around here. But if I'm on uh, Queen Elizabeth Highway from Calgary heading to Edmonton, you can talk quite a distance because FM works and how FM works, it's not like AM where it bounces off of, of mountains and all that. It's, it's how FM works, it's the line of sight in some cases. And of course, how much power you're putting out. And these things here, you're supposed to have them down to 30 watts. Some of them come with 50 watts, but you're, I think you're only licensed allowed to use 30 watts. So, so they're a real lifesaver. So if you're going to get into trucking and you're in Canada, I'd get one of these things. Because if you get a CB radio, <coughs> radio excuse me, uh, you're going to notice that uh, not too many people talk on those things. Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, I heard a story about one guy. He was driving for three months and that's another thing I've only been driving for four and a half months these trucks I've driven five ton before and that but these particular trucks only about four and a half four months now I think four and a half months one guy he was only driving for three months and he was going down the pass in Rogers Pass there's a long 8% uh, downgrade and at the very end is a very sharp turn that's 50 kilometers an hour and he didn't slow down for it and uh, he ended up crashing the truck and they literally had to amputate his leg to get him out and to me that's pretty scary and I remember the first or second day that I was out here on my own first time driving I had a lot of truckers on my tail 
honking the horn and jumping on the radio and saying, get your boot, you know, get your butt moving. But I think the first time I drove through here was pouring rain. Couldn't see a whole lot. And I just decided to slow down to about 70 because I couldn't see where I really was going. It was raining so hard. And when it rains really hard, the black asphalt is even blacker and you can't see a whole lot can't see very far ahead of you so you don't really know. I know these roads really well now but still when it rains the oil comes up it gets slippery um, the, even if I know the road inside out and it, there's a downgrade I'm gonna take it easy going down that because most of these trucks now are ran by computers and it does and I've heard stories about guys that are driving a truck and all of a sudden it just shuts off and your engine brake on these trucks are computerized and if your engine brakes or should I say if your engine shuts off or something dies or there's a computer malfunction or something all of a sudden your engine brake dies now you've got to use your brakes going down this hill and it doesn't take much these brakes heat up they can start a fire and I've already seen two trailers now in my travels in the last four months uh, completely on fire. Probably because of the overuse of their brakes. Because when you go down these hills, you're supposed to use your engine brake and fan the brakes as you go down, just ever so slightly, just to keep your RPM from shooting through the roof and your speed, of course, from going over where it should be. So, bottom line is, I respect the road. I respect that if some uh, computers malfunction they can go wrong and I'd rather be going down a hill at a speed that I'm comfortable with in the event something goes on I have enough braking power to stop without heating them up and to me that's really important especially when the winter hits I'm going to be a whole lot more cautious and I'll be videotaping quite a bit of it and I'll tell you something, I'm going to have a lot of angry truckers on my tail, I already know that. But that's not going to bother me. <coughs> There's one thing that I learned, it's not to let people intimidate you. If they want to go around you and drive like a maniac, that's up to them. Chances are, they're going to, they, there's a higher percentage that they're going to get into an accident before you will and they've got more experience than you because they figure, well, we know I know the roads really well, but they, you can't see black ice. Sometimes it's under the snow, you can't see it. And all of a sudden, you slow down, you throw your engine brake on, and when the engine brake comes on, it slows the truck down, because it slows the engine down, but it's not slowing the trailer down. And before you know it, you're looking at the logo on the side of your trailer. Because your truck's slowing down, but the trailer's still going, and before you know it, you've jackknifed. And that's one of the main causes of jackknifing. I think, is, is people using the engine brakes during slippery conditions. Would I use the engine brake going down a slippery hill? Well, I think I would have it set at a very low level before I went down the hill. And just, if I have to, I might up at one stage and, and keep an eye on the trailer to see if it's sliding. And, and hopefully, if it holds, I'll just keep that slow speed going all the way down the hill. necessities that I needed. I needed to get myself a really good GPS. I bought a Cobra one. I can't remember what the name of it is. I, I don't recommend it. I had it for 30 days when I bought it and I couldn't return it. That was, That's their policy. You have it for 30 days, you're stuck with it. The problem with it was is that when I got it, it was the maps were out of date so badly there are roads in Calgary that have been there for three years and it's still not updated on this. The only good thing about this GPS, it's a trucker GPS, it's got a built-in logging feature where you can keep track of your hours. That's the only reason why I use this thing. Some might say, well, it's really handy to have too because it lets you know what roads you're allowed to go down as a trucker and what you're not. Well, that's not necessarily true with this thing. It warns me about roads you can go down. So this thing is totally messed up. Like I said, I spent $300 so I could track my, my hours. 
I contacted Cobra, told them. I think I spent three months fighting back and forth with them. Told them, you've got to send me an updated map because I just spent all this money on it and I deserve to have a map that's up to date. Well, that bird almost nailed the trailer. Uh, so two months later, or, or a month later, or eight weeks later, they finally sent me the map update. I installed it, and I thought, great, here we go. Maybe I can use it now. It still doesn't see half of the roads that have been there for three years, so I just said, forget it. I ended up buying myself a TomTom. -tom. It's not a trucker version, but I'll tell you something. I got the one that had the free map updates and the free updates, lifetime. It's an awesome GPS. The graphics are so much better. I mean, this Cobra one, it's like, it's like an 80s video game. It's just... Stick to CB radios, Cobra. Stay away from GPSs. You don't know what you're doing. So if you're going to get a GPS, I know there's a TomTom, -tom, a trucker version for TomTom. -tom. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. But uh, I would stay away from the Cobra for sure. I uh, got myself a... Ooh, that's a pretty wide load there. Uh, yeah, go ahead. What the hay is going on? Look at all the hay. I bet you those things weigh something. Especially when they're wet. I don't know if you got a chance to see that or not. So here, look at this. I'm going to show you this. I don't know if you can see that or not. Going to be some happy cows later on. <coughs> or horses. I picked up a cooler from Canadian Tire. If you're in the U.S. and you don't know Canadian Tire, it's uh, basically a automotive surplus store that has accessories for camping and all that kind of fun stuff. Plus uh, automotive stuff, parts. It's actually pretty good. The only problem with that thing there is when it gets too cold, ice that builds up on it so you gotta actually make sure your cab is warm when you're running it to keep it cool <laughs> it's not crazy so um, in my other truck that's still getting fixed they took it for another test drive and it failed again so now they gotta order more parts so they said it could be next week when they'll have it installed I don't even care anymore I'll get it when I get it I already put a request in for another truck because this one here it needs a lot of work. The windshield has to be replaced. The wipers have to be fixed, among other things. I do not want to be stuck with this one here because somebody else neglected it. And as soon as I have a chance to get into another truck or my truck, then they can fix this thing and the next guy doesn't end up stuck with a, a lemon. So uh, on my, in my other truck, I have a TV which is kind of nice to have because when you're stuck on the side of a highway because it's closed because of an avalanche, mudslide, whatever, and you're there for like five or six hours, it's nice to be able to watch a movie or something and you're not bored out of your mind. I did get a microwave for mine. It's installed, but I'm probably going to get rid of it because... Did some did some uh, reading up on microwaves and all the uh, radiation and crap that ends up in your in your food. Some people might say, "Oh, it's harmless." No, they've done their statistics. They've done their checking out. They're not going to make it public. Look how much money would be lost if people started bringing out the truth about a lot of things that we use. squeeze so I'm probably going to get rid of the microwave I don't know if I could really use it for anything oil, water no, you still end up with the same garbage 
I'll probably get rid of it and get myself a toaster oven. Why not? And to power all that stuff, I have a 1500 watt power inverter that's underneath the bed in the other truck. And that powers all my electrical, which is nice. I can run the microwave, the TV, I have a toaster. I can run all that stuff on that inverter and it wouldn't even hurt it. But it's kind of nice to have the truck running once in a while because that sucks a lot of juice out of the batteries. And besides that, I just have my change of clothes and my toiletries and nothing fancy. I've seen some guys' trucks that are shag carpets and, uh, oh man. Uh, my buddy Patrick, he, he put in a, a surround sound stereo system in his. <laughs> that I would like to see. I don't know if I'd go that far because when something goes wrong with your truck and things will go wrong, now you got to pull all this crap out. And I'd rather just have the basic necessities. And to me, having a, a, a small TV and, and your toaster oven and stuff, it just gives you a little bit of comfort of home while you're not at home. So, that, that's pretty well what I got. I did have, a, I did do a video about that before. So I really don't know why I'm saying this again. <coughs> just checking the temperature here. Yeah, it's dropping down. It's about 8 now. Went to 15 to 8. Quite the temperature drop within uh, 10 miles. And, you know, there's the pluses and negatives about doing this job. The plus, you do get to spend a lot of time out in, in nature, which is wonderful. You get to see new areas, new places you've never been before. You get to see a lot of animals, you know, deer. I've had a, an elk, which is pretty big, walk right out in front of the truck. It's a good thing I was going slow enough. I slowed down. Things got the uh, brain the size of a peanut to walk out in front of a truck carrying a load of 50,000 pounds. More than that. Man, they've been working on this road here since I started. And I, they are going at this so slow. This is going to be murder in the winter. Because of this cam here, the way I have it, I can't hook up another one, unfortunately. When I get into my other truck, I'm going to have my other cam set up. So when I want to talk or whatever during the day, I can just fire that thing up and I can do that and then you can still see what's going on. This cam that I'm using right now, it's actually supposed to be used just for uh, safety reasons to capture anything that happens on the road. Uh, that. You know, as a witness, and that's the name of the company where I got it, ReliableEyewitness.com, or should I say Reliable-Eyewitness.com. It's pretty cool. It's got a timestamp on it. I don't have it on right now because I don't want a timestamp over my forehead. So anyway, that's about all I can really say. Uh, Oh yeah, the pluses and the negatives. The pluses, you get to see a lot. You get to travel a lot of places. If you're a uh, believer, it's nice to be able to sit in a rest area in the middle of the mountain somewhere. Open up your Bible and read it. Or listen to your audio Bible. It's really nice. Very serene, 
very relaxing. The negatives. Well, some of the negatives I've yet to see, and that is having to chain up in the winter time and deal with the cold conditions. Uh, the negative, what another negative is, is that if you've got family at home, sometimes you're gone a week at a time. It depends on what you're doing. So you, if you like being at home, there's a little bit of a negative for that because you're not home as much. It takes a little getting used to. Uh, the first couple of weeks it was really difficult for me to be away from home because I've been a single parent for the last 16 years and I've been the only one raising my kids and all of a sudden I go from being at home all the time well at, at night anyway every night to gone out on the road I mean my girls are old enough now to take care of themselves but still it takes some adjusting big time a lot of garbage on the road here. Is that salt? <laughs> uh, the other negative is, is that there's a lot of crazy drivers out here. There's always a car, we call them four-wheelers, that they, they just need to get in front of you. It doesn't matter if they get stuck in front of you. They have to get in front of you. And then they, some of them even go slower than you are going. Or the campers and negatives are and your truck breaks down and you're stuck in the middle of nowhere. I mean, there's going to be a negative. But I think the positives outweigh the negatives big time because it uh, pays good and if you enjoy driving it's a huge plus and when I'm driving usually especially at night I'm not really watching where I'm going I know where the road is I'm always watching the other guy coming the other way Because there's been some cases where I've I'm going one way and there's a truck coming the other way and all of a sudden I can see him coming or, or swerving over over the line and it's because he's either yakking on his phone text messaging or falling asleep and I and I've had an opportunity to swerve out of the way now, if I wouldn't have been paying attention to him and I just put all my trust in, in everybody that goes by me, that guy would have nailed me. So, that's one bit of advice that I would give for the little amount of experience that I've had. And that is... Watch the other drivers. Keep an eye on the other drivers. I can't even get by this guy. It's too much of a wide load. Wow, there's a lot of crap on the, on the road here. They must have sanded the roads or something. Is it starting to rain a little bit? My windshield looks like a mud bath right now. So, I wish I could give you more advice, but I have limited experience myself. But from what I've experienced, that makes me feel safer. It's so like I said, I watch the other drivers especially at night when you can't see a whole lot when the headlights are coming right at you I got one eye I know it sounds funny one eye on them and one eye on the road like the line on the road or the the center line and if I see them cross <laughs> yeah I go cross-eyed doing that if I see them crossing over even a little bit and a lot of the time I might go over the uh, right uh, on the right side of the road there's the white line I might 
go over that a little bit when a truck is coming, just in the event that he crosses over it, because you can't see a whole lot. So I like to anticipate. I'm on the defense every time a truck go, a truck or car goes by me the other way, because you just never know what's going to happen. So make sure you're always alert. Make sure you've got lots of sleep, and if you happen to be driving, and you're feeling a little fatigued, a good way to find out whether you need a rest or not, is take a look at your GPS. See if the, uh, the lettering, the wording, the numbers, see if they're a little a little blurry. And if they are, that means it's time to take a break. Speaking of break, we are at a break check. I generally find that if you're if it, if the word the le, uh, the numbers are a little blurry, I'll find a safe place to pull over, like a pull out or something, and um, I'll take a 30 minute nap. I'll set my alarm for 30 minutes, and you'd be surprised how that charges you up. It'll keep it'll get it'll keep you going. It'll get you, give you another five hours of driving easily. You sleep longer than that. I've slept for an hour before and felt pretty good, but if you sleep longer than that, you end up feeling more tired than you were than when you got to sleep. But 30 minutes—it's like a little cat now recharges the batteries well I'm at a brake check right now and I'm gonna get out and uh, check my tires to make sure they're all inflated because sometimes on the on uh, right now I have a tandem so I've got uh, eight, eight tires in the back of the trailer if one of the inside tires goes flat You'd never know that because the other one's holding it up. It, it might look a little heavier on, on one of the other tires, but it's hard to tell whether or not all your tires are inflated. You have to go out and give them a whack with a hammer, make sure they are inflated. So anyhow, that's about it. I hope uh, what I said helped and um, I'll let you go for now. And thanks for viewing my channel. I really appreciate it. I'm sure there's going to be uh, some interesting uh, videos I'll be uploading in the next month or two or three. I got a feeling. I'll talk to you later.